something flying over our house that um, oh, it's coming towards me now. It's almost light blazing. I don't know what the hell it is. Manden på optagelsen her ringede til politiet, da han følte sig sikker på at have set en UFO. Politiet tog henvendelsen ganske alvorligt, indtil manden ringede ind igen og beklagede, at det vist nok bare var månen, han havde fået øje på. Men spørger man den britiske politibetjent Gary Hesseltine, kunne henvendelsen lige så godt have været om en rigtig UFO. Siden 2002 har han indsamlet oplysninger om mere end 400 UFO-forekomster fra hundredvis af sine politikolleger. Gary Hesseltine er for øjeblikket på besøg i Danmark, og Ekstrabladet TV inviterede ham derfor en tur i studiet. Gary, welcome. It's Thank you very a much. pleasure having you here. It's a pleasure to be here. You have earlier said that the evidence of an extraterrestrial presence is overwhelming. But when having in mind that the evidence you're referring to only is uh, observations made by uh, policemen and retired policemen, I just uh, wonder is uh, are policemen uh, better to uh, to say whether it's a UFO or not? Well, actually, there's two questions there. The first question is. Uh, i have a database of police officers uh, with over 425 cases between 1901 and 2011 involving over 903 British police officers. Can they be wrong? Of course they can. Am I saying that they're all UFOs that are ET? No, I'm not. But what I'm saying is they've been reported by police officers as UFOs in the first instance. Mm. The more interesting thing there is I'm not just basing my evidence that there is an ET presence on police officers, it's based on 5,000 pilots, 2,000 military pilots who have been sent up to intercept these things, you know, people flying F-16s. So, you know, there's a lot of people, scientists, radar controllers, air traffic, sonar operators, that kind of thing. Mm. So it's right. not just on police officers. Okay, but then uh, let's uh, have a look at some of uh, okay, this, uh, this evidence. Okay, that's fine. We'll have a look at this uh, first clip. Is, is that a UFO in the middle? Uh, of the no, no, screen? no, that's a recording light. It's a traffic police car, uh, but the object we should be looking at is on the horizon, the yeah, white light. Up on the hill. Now, the officer described this as a cluster of about 12 white spheres. Mm. That's what drew his attention. Uh, it wasn't there. He went around the corner, and then suddenly it's there. So you can see that the traffic car slows. And he's paying attention, and then unusually, and this is daytime, the objects begin to just fade out. Uh, yeah. It's been analysed. It's not an atmospheric phenomenon. It was a real object that was there above the hill. Okay, and it couldn't just be a shooting star, or a burning I've just, object. I've just said sky. it's been analysed. All the atmospherics have been ruled out. Clearly, there was an object there. What it was, I don't know. But it's very interesting because the description of the object that the officer describes is 12 white spheres. Mm. Well, I don't see many 12 white spheres in the skies very often, do you? No. So, uh, so this is good enough. So, yeah, that yeah. is a good clip. Okay, let's, um, let's look at this uh, next clip. This is something that's clearly been seen. I've not analysed this video, so I can't really draw too many uh, details to it. There are many thousands of clips that you could have used. Mm. Uh, um, is that a police clip? Yeah, it's from uh, American police. Well, I, I have not seen it before, but clearly it looks like there is something in the air. Yeah. What it is, I don't know. All right. It I wouldn't like make a... a judgment just on seeing a video clip. We have to do the analysis. Uh, we have to get the witness reports from the police officers. But if there's like seven or eight police officers from five or six different locations all looking at the same thing, yeah. then we can say that they are looking at something in the sky. Okay. And then we have to determine what it is by the way the object moves in the sky. Does it shoot off? Does it go straight up in the sky? There are certain characteristics with genuine UFOs after 60 years of research now mm. that we can say are uh, what we would term real UFOs. But, real but this, this could be uh, a UFO. Well, it's obviously an object in the sky. There clearly is something moving there, but you'd have to do a lot more analysis, and I certainly aren't going to say that that's a real yeah. UFO. All right. Um... Gary, I'm, I'm just wondering if, if these objects are not, uh, these UFOs are not uh, human or extraterrestrial, yep. um, then what do you think they're doing so close to Earth? I think that they come here because the Earth is a very unusual planet in our cosmos. But really, uh, my work as a police officer mm. is not about saying where they're from because I don't have a clue where they're from. 
The question is, do I look at the evidence? And when I look at the evidence of pilots, astronauts, cosmonauts, radar operators, sonar operators, etc., yeah. very high caliber witnesses, the conclusion on many of these cases, which is backed up by empirical data of airborne radar confirmations, ground radar, multiple instrumentation reports, data that you could produce in a court of law, yeah. then the evidence then becomes overwhelming. Yeah. Unfortunately, the media don't report the best evidence. I would only go to court with my best evidence. I wouldn't go to court with my weakest evidence. And sadly, I get frustrated with the media because they don't show the best evidence to the public. Okay, but what do you think personally? If you personally, I believe that there is a small proportion of cases, perhaps two, three percent of all cases reported, that are extraterrestrial. Do I believe that UFOs are here and real? Yes, and so do the people of the exopolitics movement in Denmark. Exopolitics mm. is a worldwide movement. In every country now, people are pressing for open release of documents. If you were to go to, say, South America, the attitudes of Brazil, Mexico, they release their information and their generals, their admirals, their colonels are saying, we've been studying these for a long time. Conclusion, extraterrestrial. Mm. That should be reported in the news. Sadly, it isn't. But then let's uh, have a look at uh, this uh, last, okay. last clip. Okay. Now this is a this was filmed over Brighton in southern England. Yeah. Uh, and on the face of it, you have a cylindrical object that looks uh, very real, moving. It's caught on the uh, onboard camera of the helicopter, police helicopter. But in this, uh, it, I've seen much sharper copies of this. And in this version here, you can see that there is a. It's what's called a sky lantern. This is something that somebody's lit, and that's a fire at the bottom. Yeah, it looks like a fireball. Yeah, it, yeah. it is, but it's in a tube, and these are quite common, especially in England. Uh, and so I don't believe that that is uh, ET. Uh, I think that was a mistaken report. The helicopter crew obviously believed that it was something very unusual. It was, but after analysis, and that's the key, we're not yeah. silly. We don't just say this is and this isn't. We have to anal uh, obviously uh, analyze everything that comes in, and when we do that, we can draw a conclusion. On that one there, it was concluded that it was a sky lantern, mm. and initially reported as a UFO because it looked very unusual. Yeah. But that's what the job of a detective should be, is to look at the material, assess the material, see what evidence there is, mm. and that's what I do. I've been doing it for 22 years. I know what evidence is, and then come up with a conclusion. But do you understand the people who, uh, who was skeptic uh, because you can't prove them 100% that there is... Well, put it this uh, way, nobody has an alien body that we can just put on the six o'clock news. No, that's no. a problem. <laughs> uh, however, but many people are sent to prison on what's called a circumstantial case, which is basically pieces of a jigsaw. And if we have enough pieces of the jigsaw, we can make a compelling a conclusion. And the compelling conclu conclusion based on... Pilots, 2,000 military pilots sent up to intercept these things, confirmed on radar. Mm. 3,000 commercial pilots have gone on record saying that in bright daylight objects have travelled with the plane for 200 miles, caught on airborne radar, ground radar, multiple aircraft seeing the same thing. If you put all of those things together, Mikhail, yeah, basically you ha can reach a conclusive decision that if in the best evidence cases there is an overwhelming UFO presence that's extraterrestrial visiting the Earth. All right. Then, uh, finally, do you think that uh, these flying objects could have aliens of the creatures on board? Well, if I believe that... Personally? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, I think some of them will be remote, uh, but that's not the question why I deal with it. But obviously, if I'm saying that a proportion of the cases are uh, ET, then somebody's got to be in these things. What they are, what they look like, I don't really care. Mm. All I'm trying to do is prove that with my bit of evidence with police officers, that in the 425 cases, the 900 police officers that are already on the database after nine years of research, that a high proportion of those cases point to an extraterrestrial conclusion. Mm. What they look like, why they're here, I'll never know. Mm. But are they here? Is there evidence there? Absolutely there is, if you know where to look. Okay. Let's um, say that's the last word, and uh, thank you. All right, I appreciate being here. Thank you very much.